you know, I hope that you don't get the wrong impression about people around you or your pastor or your elder, your deacon, your whoever, <laughs> your prophet, your preacher, your teacher, your, your family member, or even me, or maybe someone you know that is saved or has been a Christian for a long time that somehow their life is, you know, a bowl of cherries and they throw out the pits or <laughs> that it's some kind of rose garden that somehow it gets easier the more and the longer that you're a Christian. The fact is, it's never easy. It was always meant to be hard in one way. And in another way, the simplest thing you could ever do. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You make a choice. You suffer the consequences. You choose the right, it works out pretty good. You choose the wrong, it goes the opposite way. But there's more at work also that sometimes you don't know about that I resist talking about because sometimes people get carried away about spiritual things. They get way overboard on spirit this, spirit that, the devil did this, the devil did that, the devil is, the devil was, the devil never will, you know, because they make the devil or Satan, as he's known, or Lucifer, or uh, the fallen angel, the adversary of us all, into something he's not, you know, and the reality is, is that Satan is just an angel. He was a covering angel. He was an archangel. He covered or was over in the presence of God something. Now, a lot of people say it was worship, and they say it was this or that, and, you know, I'll let you study and determine for yourself according to Scripture. But the important thing is this. He's just an angel. Now, you can't do anything about it. He's the God of this world. God has already determined his destiny. He will be cast into the lake of fire. But, because of who he is and what he is, he is against what God has done in providing we as also created beings the opportunity to be one with the Son, to actually be co-heir with Jesus Christ, to be everything that Satan wanted for himself that he was denied, we will become. We will become likened unto God. We will become likened unto the Father. We will become one with the Spirit. We will become one with the Son. And we will become joint heirs. So, in a way, it's the ultimate irony that if Satan had not rebelled, that he may have found contentment in God. But he didn't. So, every time he runs into those that are becoming more like God, he is antagonistic against that with which God is doing in the person. But Satan can't influence from far away. He has to be there in person. He's an angel. He can't go and be omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He's not omni-anything. He's an angel. He has to walk, so to speak, to and fro on the earth looking for whom he may devour. And so... There are also with him fallen angels that do exist in this world, and there are principalities and powers and demonic presences that influence the world and cause us to, by our flesh, participate in what he's accomplishing. So I resist a lot of times talking too much about Satan because rarely do you find a direct confrontation with Satan himself. Rarely. And I would say probably not. In 90% of the cases that people talk about, the devil did this. I don't think so. It may be wrestling against, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities or powers or spiritual wickedness, but not Satan himself. So sometimes when people are talking about the devil, they're usually talking about their own flesh. You know, and sometimes when they're talking about having to cast out something, you know, they're usually talking about casting away something that is more flesh-oriented than it is Satan himself. Now, there are satanic influences, and there are demonic presence, and there are powers that are operating in this world that are working against godliness, but those have been set into place. 
and those operate according to the temptations that are presented to us. And we, we can resist them by simply resisting the devil or the devil's influences and he will flee. So sometimes it's not necessarily the devil out there, but the devil in you <laughs> that is causing you to war against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. That is more that way. But there is a time and a place, and in my own experience I've seen it, where as you walk with God and become close to Him, if the devil happens to be passing by your way, there is an affliction and there is a capability that he has to deceive, to lie, and to subvert those who would call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. In Tozer today, The devil never forgets those who escape bondage. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Acts 5.3 As we move farther on in the Christian life, we may expect to encounter increased hostility from the enemy of our souls. Although this is seldom presented to Christians as a fact of life, it is a very solid fact, indeed, as every experienced Christian knows, and one we shall learn how to handle or stumble over to our own undoing. If Satan opposes the new convert, he opposes still more bitterly the Christian who is pressing on toward a higher life in Jesus. The spirit-filled life is not, as many suppose, a life of peace and quiet pleasure. It is likely to be something quite the opposite. Satan hates the true Christian for several reasons. One is that God loves him, and whatever is loved by God is sure to be hated by the devil. Another is that the Christian, being a child of God, bears a family resemblance to the Father and to the household of faith. A third reason is that a true Christian is a former slave who has escaped from the galley, and Satan cannot forgive him for this affront. A fourth reason is that a praying Christian is a constant threat to the stability of Satan's government. The Christian is a holy rebel loose in the world with access to the throne of God. Satan never knows from what direction his danger will come. Who knows when another Elijah will arise, or another Daniel, or a Luther, or a Finney, or a Booth, or a Chuck Smith, or a Greg Laurie, or a Rick Warren. I know that just frustrated everybody that, you know, likes me. Or Billy Graham, and that might have frustrated some other ones. Or a John MacArthur, or a who knows who you may choose to say that is a man of God or not. But the point is, is that the greater the influence, the greater the affluence. And so that causes a attraction, not just by people, but by the principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness that also is distracted from that which they are controlling to that which they need to overthrow in the greater good that is being accomplished by the man of God. They may be doing what God has told them to do. And so then Satan comes at them. So as you walk with the Lord, should it be that you do find yourself in that same circumstance? Can I give you a hint? Jesus didn't rebuke Satan himself. And the angels didn't rebuke Satan himself. But he said, the Lord rebuked me. Let God take care of Satan and you take care of yourself. Because God is at work in you, but sometimes the flesh that you are is more often the child of Satan that you don't realize than Satan himself coming upon you and taking over. But recognize that there are times when God can protect you more than you can. And then he will take care of Satan. Because we know what the end is. And God has promised to finish his faith in you and conform you into his image. Your choice is to crucify the flesh, not crucify Satan.